Imagine, if you will, a giant circus tent at the Wangaratta Rodeo Grounds. 1,700 people gathered, local food trucks and hours of fantastic rock music, hit after hit across genres. Sounds awesome, doesn't it? Well, Speaker, I'm here to report that Project 365 Ripple Effect event in Wangaratta last weekend was absolutely rollicking. It was a fabulous event. I will see a, a 20 piece band with full of enthusiasm and full of talent. Awesome music, obviously. Awesome people, awesome talented people. Just an awesome vibe, a relaxed vibe, an open vibe where people can just come and just enjoy the music, enjoy each other. As I said, it's going to be the, the Woodstock of Wangaratta. I've had friends and family that have been deeply affected by ill mental health and, you know, sometimes you just don't know what to say if they do speak up, but the fact that they're speaking up is the main thing and I think the ripple effect, having the ripple effect, will hopefully bring more people together for that and they'll feel more comfortable actually seeking help to get better. Sometimes it feels I'm from Wangaratta, I'm the founder of Project 365 and drummer number two in the band You Can Cry. Pete, why did you start Project 365? Why? That's going to be a fairly long answer. Um, <sighs> there we go, on cue. I've suffered depression for 17 years, and that's been a really difficult battle, and um, at times been in some really, really low spots uh, that have been hard to get out of, and um, some really dark thoughts crept in, some really, really dark thoughts that could have changed the whole landscape of so many things. And there was a moment there where, I mean, I could go on and on, but I wanted to do something positive instead of being a statistic. And um, I love music, like all the band members do in the, in the band and the cohort. And I knew that if I could make a positive out of a negative through music, and bringing a whole heap of people with me. Um, we could do something pretty cool. And, um, and this is where we are today. I woke up that morning and thought of the idea at 2.33 one morning. I never envisaged us to be where we are now, um, to be making a, a documentary about promoting positive mental health. And what I want you to do, because we're making a documentary tonight, everyone, we're making a, a documentary! The band's journey and the cohort's journey, you know, the sponsors and the, and the contributors and all the family members and everyone involved. I, I never thought it would get to where we are now. Um, it's been 
It's been awesome. How are you feeling, Rocky? No. <laughs> He's awesome. Yeah. Do you mean? He's relaxed. What? <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I'm not stressed at all. No? You sure? It's all good. No, it's going okay. <laughs> How about okay. 16 days? I'm fortunate to go and talk to different cohorts about mental health. And um, um, there's one particular business we went to. And as I was winding up, I looked over to my right and I saw this older gentleman crying. I walked over to him and, and I said, um, are you okay? And he said, no, this is fucked. This is just fucked. And I said, oh, sorry. And he goes, I, I lost my daughter to suicide. And right then, uh, you know, another penny dropped of why we're doing what we're doing. And you know, I remember being approached by a big solar company to go and talk to 180 people um, about my journey. I'm a dad, I'm a husband, I'm a normal Joe Blow. I've got to go and mow lawns after this, that's my day job. And uh, I've got friends, I've got foes, I've got debt, I've got everything that a normal Joe Blow has. In Wangaratta, I'm kind of renowned as a pretty happy, kind of go-lucky guy. Probably a bit of a kid at times. Enjoy a beer, bit of a joke, bit of banter. But what people don't know is what eats, up, eats me up inside. You know, playing cricket with the kids was white noise. You know, Christmas mornings sometimes is white noise. And our next show is called The Ripple Effect because The Ripple Effect is not only the response we had from our town about what we do, it's about the ripple effect that it has, this beast has on your loved ones, on your family, on your, on your, on your mates. It's a killer. It's a killer. One of the biggest killers in Australia, in society. So we want to make a difference and we have done that so far because people have reached out to us who've gone to our last shows and they've actually said that they actually started talking. So have we saved lives? I'd actually like to say yes, we have. But, you know, we're not looking for accolades, we're not looking for pats on the back. What we're looking for is support. What they did from that day on, and what they've done with the project for a multinational company has been mind blowing. Financially, amazing. Um, and, you know, we're blown away by a lot of our, all our sponsors um, and contributors. The money is just insane. It allows us to do what we do. Um, I really appreciate your time, so thank you. Uh, Matt Grace's dance solo in the first concert to New Sensation. <laughs> no, I, people people ask me all the time about what's a standout, what's a highlight. I think obviously performing is the highlight, but all the background work that's gone on and the the messages that we've shared with each other and the community. Um, you can't really pick a highlighted moment on that. Um, 
I think the highlight is yet to come, to be honest. Probably just learning, just learning so much. Like, like I said, everyone's blown me away. I remember the first rehearsal, and everyone was jamming together. You know, was, I think Addie was playing one of her original songs, and people just started. They just picked it up and started jamming with her, and I'm just like, oh my god, what am I doing here? I cannot do this. Um, but everyone was so positive and um, encouraging, and obviously, you know, singing in front of heaps of people last year was pretty cool too. <laughs> Uh, we had the original show on last year and after the event we had a celebration in our shed and we were standing around and there was a person from the, from the group that put it on in the wider group. They opened up and there were other people in that, that little group at the time who were able to really um, help out and share some things they'd learnt. And in that moment I thought we'd achieved our outcome. We'd had at least one person talk out about their issues, share it, and then seeing someone else willing to jump in and help where they could and listen. It was really, um, really special. Ah, gee, there have been so many moments. I've just, I love the fact after we finished the two shows um, that people reached out. I remember a, um, a, a message I got off a stranger after the first show. He'd actually gone down to Melbourne and relayed our shows to this friend of his who had um, post-traumatic stress disorder. Him telling that person about Project 365 and what we were doing actually made that person talk. And it made a difference to him. That stranger, we hadn't even met. We didn't even, we didn't even know him. And um, that's one that resonates with me. When you hear the stories of people who it has directly impacted and you're like what we what we're doing I didn't know at the outset is this really going to make a difference so when you hear those stories and people say this actually really made a difference I talked to someone today I talked to my mate at work about how I was feeling turns out they've been feeling the same way too we've worked side by side for years and we've never shared this and now now I've got some you know now we can support each other that's the, that's why we're doing this, that's the fundamental moment and those moments. Um, the other bit is just having a laugh with the band and, you know, that's been awesome. Were there boys cleaning up half yourself? And now it becomes a real, you know, I really look forward to rehearsals and spending that time with, you know, playing music but actually spending time with a bunch of people who I've gotten to know really, really well and now consider them all friends um, over the time that we've been doing this. In my life I've been around some really pretty good humans. Nothing tops this. Nothing. Hi, I'm Neil Barassi. I am a private psychologist in my own clinic and I've been in the field, I guess, for over 25 years. For people that I've supported in the past that have attempted suicide, when I've spoken to them down the track, they feel that, and the general consensus is that they feel that there's no end to their pain. The only way to, to, to get out of their pain is to end it for themselves. And fortunately, if they've unsuccessfully tried suicide, they've actually realised weeks, months, years later that they're glad they didn't actually 
carry it through or it was unsuccessful because they've now seen that other aspect of life that they thought they never would. So I try to encourage people that they might be going through difficult times, but it's not going to last forever. Unfortunately, it's still an ongoing issue that people don't seek professional help. And that's something that I'm hoping through Project 365 in creating this awareness that it is okay to reach out. The support is out there and not be afraid to access that support. So I went through a time in my life in 2020 when things were pretty dark. Um, it's a time when a lot of people were in the same sort of place during COVID. But through some life events, I was in an incredibly dark place. And one of the main things that got me through that time was talking out about where I was at. At the time, I felt embarrassed about what I was going through. And through those conversations, it sort of just dawned on me that what I was experiencing was really was common. It wasn't as big as I was building up. And over time, I was able to overcome that situation through having those conversations. And I look back and I am just incredibly lucky that I had someone that I could talk to at that time. Just in the promotion of Project 365 has created that conversation out there that it is okay not to be okay and, and don't be afraid of mental health. And if we can get people to look around and say, hey, look, they've, they've experienced, they're talking about, they're singing about it, then I think the job is certainly worthwhile. I've been to many workshops, I've been to many presentations and symposiums about mental health, but I've never seen something like this that's created such an awareness out there, and I feel really proud to be a part of that. We're the fighters. What I want you to do stop. is I want you to turn to that person next to you, regardless if you know them or not, pat them on the back and say, how are you going? Let's do it. Where do we go from here? I mean, how much bigger do we get from where we are now? So, not sure we could fit any more members in the band. <laughs> but, you know, I could be surprised. A couple of band members did suggest theatre and Broadway last year, which um, we haven't gotten there yet, but uh, look, I hope that in some form we can keep this going because I'd like to see this happen again. Bigger crowd, bigger stage, bigger band, bigger sound, bigger message. Um, I have a vision and the band has a vision that we want to make this the biggest conversation, not in Victoria, but in Australia. Hey, we'll make mistakes. Um, I know I will. I always do, but we all do and we're human. And um, we pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off and move on. So looking forward to it. You know, 1,800, 2,000 people, twilight, music. What else do you need?